Welcome. This is the first video for Chapter 7 from Introduction to Programming Using Processing, and this chapter deals with a very powerful concept in programming known as arrays. So here's an outline of how we'll cover the material in this video and the ones that follow it. We're going to start out with what arrays are and why do we need them. Then after that, we'll look at some syntax issues to talk about how to declare and create arrays. We'll talk about the differences between primitive arrays and object arrays, that is, arrays that hold primitive values and arrays that hold object references. We'll take a look at our general pattern for processing arrays using a for loop. We'll have to talk about using arrays as parameters and return values, which will also lead us into a discussion of pass by reference versus pass by value parameters. And then finally, we will talk about sorting and searching arrays, which are two very common uh, tasks that we have when we deal with arrays. So let's begin with what arrays are and why we need them. <clears throat> An array is a contiguous sequence of variables or storage locations that are all of the same type. They're either all the same primitive type, like they're all ints or they're all floats, or they're all references to objects of some sort. And that whole collection of variables or storage locations is referred to with a single name. And then we can access any particular element in that collection or that sequence with its index number. Okay, so it's sort of a way to hold a whole bunch of things in a container and we can access each of the elements in the container by some index value that tells us where it's at in the container. Now, in processing, arrays are objects, so that means that they have some characteristics in common with other types of objects. Like we use the new keyword to create them, just like we use the new keyword to create other objects. And there are also certain methods and fields that can be accessed via the dot in an object reference. So if ARR is a, a reference referring to a array, then ARR.length is a field that we can access directly that tells us how many elements are in that particular array. Now, it turns out that we use arrays all the time in programming, and so to make our lives a little bit easier, there are additional ways to manipulate arrays beyond the ones that we normally have with just generic objects. This is similar to how there are special ways to work with string objects. So we had unique ways to create strings, we had unique ways to concatenate strings with the plus sign. Just like that, there will be some things that are just a little bit different with arrays even though they're just objects. So for example, when we start accessing array elements, we'll use square brackets to indicate which element we want to access. So this is a sample uh, conceptual diagram of an array. And this one happens to be named A. A is actually just a variable that holds the location of the array in memory, or the object in memory. Okay, which means that A is an object reference, points to the array. This one's got eight elements. If you count the boxes, you'll find that there are eight boxes there. And the indices tell us which element we're referring to. And notice that we start at element zero. So the first element in an array is always at element zero. And the last one is always one minus the length of the array. Okay. So the contiguous part means that all of these are right next to each other. There's no memory in between them. This whole chunk from element 0 all the way through element 7 has been set aside, divided into eight compartments, each of them holding the same type of a thing. So why do we need these things anyway? Well, arrays are really useful when we have a bunch of related items that are all of the same type that need to be processed in a similar way. 
So let's look at an example. You may have done this uh, exercise back in chapter two where you drew a bar chart with five grades and a line for the average. Okay, so that was not a very difficult program. Um, it was chapter two in the book after all, so it was pretty early on. But if you did that exercise, think for a moment on what you would have to do to change it if you wanted to process 50 grades instead of just five. And let's take a look at those two programs, the five grades and the 50 grades, and see how those are different, just to get a feel for how arrays help us out. Okay, this first program is a, a solution to exercise 58 from chapter two. So if you're looking way ahead in the videos and this has been assigned, look quick, there's your solution. But in any case, what it does is it gets input for five grades from the user, stores them in five separate float variables. And that all happens in these first lines here that are highlighted. Okay. Then after that, it computes the average and then starts drawing. So it determines a rectangle width, draws a first rectangle, then moves over, draws the next rectangle, and so on. And so in total, five different rectangles are drawn, and the line is drawn at the end with the average. So if we run this, it processes or asks us for uh, the different grades. So I'll just enter some samples, and then it spits out my output. OK, so that one's not too tough. But now let's take a look at the second example where we might have 50 grades. OK, think about that for a second. Here I had this code to uh, draw rectangles very similar, and I had five different copies of it. Well, do I want to have 50 different variables and 50 different rectangles? Yuck. The answer is no, I don't. I don't want to have to maintain 50 separate grade variables with different values in them, and then try to repeat rectangle calls to draw all those rectangles 50 different times. That would be very error prone. It would also be very difficult to modify. So if I did go through the trouble of updating it to work with 50, what if all of a sudden I had 75 grades to deal with? Well, I'd have to go and change everything again. 75 grades in 75 variables, 75 different rectangle calls. So instead of that, what we're going to do in this next example is we're going to store all those grades in one entity, an array named grades, that we can uh, then access elements individually via their index numbers. And that will make things much easier. So some of this syntax that we're going to see in just a second won't make sense because we haven't looked at the syntax we're creating or processing arrays yet. But I just want you to think about it in terms of simplicity compared to what we had. All right, so here is a array version of the same problem. What it's going to do is ask me for a number of grades and then it's going to create an array that's that large and instead of prompting me for input it's going to make the grades randomly uh, save us a little bit of time it'll calculate the average create some colors that's all in setup and then in draw all it does is fill all those values so instead of 50 or 75 or 46 or however many grades I have different rectangle calls I have one for loop that uses a color draws a rectangle, updates my x variable to its next location. Much simpler. If I look at how do I create grades, instead of reading uh, input into 50 different variables, again, I can use a for loop to go through and access each of those variables in turn. And so if I replaced this piece right here that is uh, randomizing the grades with some input, then I could just input however many grades I need directly into the array. Again, in three or four lines of code instead of 50. Calculating the averages is similar. I'll start a sum out at zero, use a for loop to go through the array of grades, adding to the sum as we go, and then calculate the average 
at the end. So that's the justification for why we want arrays is because it makes our programs much simpler and much more flexible. So let's just create one with 50 random grades and there's some output. Okay, now again, what do I have to change to make that work differently? Well, what if I have 75 grades? I didn't have to change anything. Okay, what if I had 25 grades? Didn't have to change anything. Okay, so there's our justification. Makes our program much more flexible, much more powerful. So next up, we're going to learn how to declare and instantiate arrays.